So now that we know the formula for work and we're familiar with what work is, we can actually use our knowledge of work to derive that formula for kinetic energy that we saw before. And so if the net work on any object is equal to the net force of that object times d, its displacement, this is a simplified form of Fd cosine theta, assuming like in the diagram on this slide, the applied force and the displacement are in the same direction, cosine theta is just one. Um, so we can also say then, right, that the net work on an object is equal to, we know the net force, right, via Newton's second law, is equal to the mass of an object times its acceleration. So we can say this is equal to m times a times d, mass times acceleration times displacement. Now, if we know also from kinematics, acceleration is able to be expressed in terms of velocities and displacement as well. And so using our kinematic equations, we can rewrite this formula as so. All right, so we've gone ahead and derived um, an expression for acceleration using one of the kinematic equations, plug that back in. And then we see here that we have a displacement in the denominator and a displacement outside here. And so those displacements will cancel, meaning that the net work on an object is m times, and then just vf squared minus vi squared over 2. We can actually break that fraction apart into two separate fractions as well, equal to m vf squared over 2 minus m vi squared over 2. And then we can uh, show that over 2 is 1 half, which is what we were expecting to see. 1 half m vf squared minus 1 half m vi squared. And so what this tells us, right, is that the net work on an object is equal to the one-half mvf squared term. We know that to be the kinetic energy, maybe at the end, right, minus one-half mvi squared. That's the kinetic energy at the beginning. So some textbooks will write this as the net work on any object is just equal to the change in kinetic energy. You can see that there. KEF minus KEI is just delta KE. Uh, this is known as the work energy theorem. And this says that for any object, this is not accounting for any change in height or, you know, if there's potential energy as well, that's a separate matter. Just for an object like this box being moved across the floor, the change in kinetic energy of that object can be represented as the work done on that object. Okay. And so that's where this formula comes from. We, they define one-half mv squared to represent the energy of an object in motion. And that's how we got the formula for kinetic energy. All right, we can also use our knowledge of work now to go back and derive that formula for gravitational potential energy that we've used uh, previously. So if you look at, for example, someone dropping a tennis ball, like I've shown on the right-hand side of the slide here, um, we can think about the total work done on this ball as the net force multiplied by the displacement, right? Again, assuming that the force is in the same direction as displacement, I've just dropped that cosine theta term here. Um, so cosine theta is essentially just one here, right? So what forces are acting on the tennis ball as it's falling, right? Yep, you probably guessed it. The only force acting on the tennis ball is the force of the earth pulling that tennis ball towards it. And so we know that that's going to be the force of gravity, which will be equal to the mass of the tennis ball times g, the gravitational field strength on earth. Now, assuming that the ball travels for some amount of time, eventually the ball will end up lower than where it started, right? And we can say that this change in the y position is going to be the displacement of the ball. And so if work is nothing more than the force acting on the object multiplied by its displacement, we can say that the work done on the ball here is going to be equal to mg times delta y, right? mg being the force of gravity. So directly it's fg, right? And then fg is just mg. And the displacement here is delta y. And so that's why we said, right, that if work is just a change in energy, then work here would be the change in potential energy, is just equal to mg delta y. Or, you know, at its basic form, the amount of potential at any point is just mgy, right? So that's where this formula came from. So I wanted you to see that derivation as well. Um, the idea that force and displacement are all you need to calculate the change in energy of an object.